How to shoot boudoir photography at home. Do you want to shoot boudoir, but you don't have a big fancy studio? No worries. I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to create a professional home studio, and it's easier than you might think. It's showtime. Hello, I'm Mike Lloyd, and I run a multi-six-figure boudoir studio here in Silicon Valley, California. Now, you might be thinking, well, what qualifies you to talk about building a home studio? Well, I'm filming this right now in my home studio. I do all of my boudoir sessions here. Now, for the first several years of being in business, I shot everything in a local hotel, and that worked out really well. But now I'm in an opportunity here in my home where I have extra rooms. I could convert part of the house into a dedicated shoot space, and it's freaking amazing. I could live here. So I have four things to go over today to help you build the perfect home studio. The first, putting yourself in your client's shoes. The second, privacy. The third, lighting. And the fourth, furniture. So let's start with the first one. First place is usually a good one to start with. Putting yourself in your client's shoes. When they come in for a boudoir session or any photo shoot, they're generally pretty nervous, especially with boudoir. It's a very vulnerable thing to do. They are going to be photographed in their underwear, probably never done this before. It's a big ask. So if they walk into your home and it looks like the frat party scene from Animal House, that is not providing a good, safe environment for your client to explore this photo shoot. Also, if you have children running around and there's like stains on the floor and loud noises or roommates, other things going on, also not providing a great environment. So the first thing that you should consider when planning your home studio is how do you keep this the safest, most comfortable environment possible? And I always recommend getting a second opinion. So bring friends over, not the friends that you're partying with, but people who don't party with you and ask what they think of your space. Is that a place where they would feel comfortable doing a photo shoot, let alone a boudoir shoot? Because again, if you're bringing them into your bedroom where you like drool on the pillow and you didn't make your bed and you've got pinup posters on the wall, clothes on the floor and beer cans on the desk, probably not a great environment to bring a client into. I would never do that. So really consider the environment first. And once you go into it with that mindset, it gets so much easier to build out a great place to do your shoot. And look at that kitchen. You're finally gonna be able to cook a decent meal. It doesn't even have to be in the bedroom. It could be in your living room. It could be in a garage. It could be an extra room in the house. I would never recommend using your own personal bedroom. I think that's weird. I know some people have done it. I just can't get behind that. Like, especially as a man shooting boudoir, the last place I'm gonna invite my clients to come into is my own bed. That, to me, is just way too much of a liability and not providing a safe, comfortable environment for my clients. So again, putting yourself in your client's shoes, really figuring out how to create the safest, most comfortable environment for them to come into and feel vulnerable, that's how you're gonna find the best success. Part of that is privacy. Point number two, I do not allow anyone else to be in my home when I'm working with a client. You know, I have family who will come and stay with me for a week. I love my parents, you know, and they come in from out of town. I have a guest bedroom here they stay in or I used to have a roommate staying here, a buddy of mine needed a place to live for a while, I had an extra bedroom, that worked out, but I never photographed anyone here if I had somebody else in the house. Because even if I'm closing the doors, you can still hear people in the other rooms, and it's distracting. And there's always the worry, especially on your client's part, is someone gonna walk in the room? There's a ton that could go into that that's gonna make your client nervous. Do they have a safe place to change that's away from wherever you're shooting? You know. I have a, a restroom that I keep clean. It's mostly just for the clients to use. Uh, I use a different one in the house, especially when they're here. Little things like that go a long way. Having a private place for them to change is huge. So if your bathroom hasn't been cleaned in two years, I definitely recommend getting a house cleaner, something safe, comfortable environment, a place for them to hang up clothes so they don't just have to throw things on the floor. Again, part of the experience, safe, comfortable environment, but privacy is a huge one. If you have family living with you or roommates, cool. Make sure they're not in the house when you're actually working with a client. It's gonna be a game changer. <laughs> Point number three, lighting. The cool thing about working in your own home studio, you control the lights. So 
I use flash for everything. Even when I shoot outdoors, I always bring flash as my main light and then just use ambient around me. Now, if you're in a place where you have tons of window light and you want to shoot natural light and not just as an excuse to not learn flash, but you legitimately want to shoot natural light, go for it. Do it, but you get to control your own lighting and it's the coolest thing. So as long as you know how to use lights, it doesn't matter what the light is like inside the room. As long as there's enough ambient light for you to properly expose and focus, things like that. You basically can't shoot in a dark room where the camera can't see. That's about it. You don't need a ton of lighting gear. I do most of my setups with one, maybe two lights, But again, for the first almost 10 years of my career, one light setups for everything that I did. So as long as I could fit one light in the room, and I always could, I had enough room for my lighting. So if you're in a smaller space and you can't have a hair light and a rim light and a background light and multiple lights in the front of your subject, totally fine. You don't need it. Start with one, add a second if you want to. You're rarely going to need more than that shooting boudoir. You have the space, if you have the gear great, but you don't need it. So don't let that be a reason you don't get started. Another trick with lighting, this is one of my favorite things, especially shooting in smaller hotel rooms when I can't move furniture around because sometimes it's attached to the floor and I can't redecorate as much as I want to. I will bounce light off the ceiling or the walls. So when you're choosing the colors of your place, I recommend neutral colors. So I have some walls that are white. Everything else is a darker neutral gray because as your flash goes off, If you've got red walls or blue walls or pink or whatever, that light will bounce off of the walls and create a color cast on your clients. So blue wall, going to make people look like a Smurf. You generally don't want that unless you run a Smurf-themed boudoir studio, then own it. So neutral colored walls are a game changer. You can take your light. I happen to have one right here. Take the honeycomb off. And just this reflector, aim it at the ceiling, like in the corner or at a wall up in the air. Just aim it at the wall or the ceiling. The light's gonna bounce off of that and come back and light your subject like a giant softbox. Also emulates window light. So if you don't have big softboxes, you don't have room to put big softboxes or umbrellas up, you can just aim the lights at the walls or the ceiling. My favorite is the corner where the wall meets the ceiling and you're gonna get tons of gorgeous light bouncing back. The last thing is furniture. Typically in boudoir, we have a bed. Maybe some chairs, a couch, a rug, things like that. You don't actually need a bed to shoot boudoir. I mean, if you have one, great. I got a dedicated one for this room that we shoot on. It's amazing. You wanna get the firmest mattress you can get because when your clients lean into it, you don't want them to sink in and smush out. No one wants to look smushed, but also when they're on their hands, when their hands sink into the mattress, you can't see the hands anymore in the photos and it looks like they are just on wrist, like they're amputees, not usually a good look. But again, you don't need a bed. You can get an air mattress and put it on the floor. So if you get, you know, a nice area rug, you have good hardwood floors, you can just put a mattress down, an air mattress, throw some sheets over it, do your shoot, break it down at the end of your shoot. So if you do this in your living room, you don't need to stash a bed in the living room. You can just do an air mattress down on the floor. Problem solved. Also, I use stools, I use chairs, I have clients sit on the floor, I have a little bench, I've got my couch, I've got a brick fireplace right behind the camera. And I love posing my clients on that. They can sit on the bricks, they can stand, lean up against the mantle. There's a ton of things we can do with it. I have my clients sit up against the bed on the floor. I've got different walls in here with different kinds of curtains on them. We can pose in front of those. Plus, I put these rolling backdrops up behind me, so I have four different backdrops that I can roll down. Ton of options. I never have enough time to cover all of them in a shoot, and it's all contained in this one room. And when I'm done shooting, the backdrops roll up, the bed gets pushed back, and I do all of my meetings in here, like my IPS sessions and everything else. So you don't need a ton of room, but again, the air mattress trick, Game changer. Just get a pump because the last thing you want to be doing when your client is there is trying to blow up an air mattress with your lungs or like a foot pump. It's going to take forever. So get an electronic pump, fill up the air mattress, and you're good to go. So there you go. My four steps to building a professional home studio that's functional and a safe place for your clients. Number one, get into your client's shoes. Figure out how to make this the cleanest, safest, most comfortable place for them to be in and get opinions from outsiders. Not the dudes you party with, but invite women over to look at the space and get their opinion. Don't get offended by what they say. Don't get defensive. Take their feedback and make changes accordingly. Number two, privacy. Don't have anybody else in the home when you're doing the shoots. Number three, 
is lighting. You get to control the lighting, which is amazing. You don't need a bunch of lights. You can get by with just one if you don't have natural light. Don't let lighting be the reason you don't do a home studio. And number four, furniture. You don't even need a bed. You can do an air mattress, chairs, stools, the floor, the walls. Everything is a place for you to play. So there you go. Go create your home studio. And if you want to know more about lighting, more about posing, and more about how to actually book clients to get them into your home studio, be sure to watch the rest of my videos. See you there.